Hi, I'm Stephen from Jigsaw24. Today I'm going to show you the uses of target disk mode, target boot mode, and also target display mode. Target disk mode is used when you're trying to troubleshoot a hard drive that could potentially be faulty, but you're not sure whether it's the hardware or the operating system at fault. Target boot mode can be used when you suspect that it's a hardware issue and you just need to confirm that it's not the software at fault. And target display mode is used when you've got an iMac and you want to use it as an external display for another one of your Macs. First of all, we're going to take a look at target disk mode. To do this, you'll need a Firewire 400 to 400 cable, a Firewire 400 to 800 cable, a Firewire 800 to 800 cable, or you could use a Thunderbolt cable to link two Thunderbolt Macs together. First things first, if you're using a Mac portable, as I am, I've got two MacBook Pros here, you need to make sure both of them are currently plugged into a power supply to ensure that they don't lose charge during this process. Any loss of power could result in a loss of data. Next thing is to connect in the cable to connect the two. I'm going to use a Firewire 800 cable. You just need to turn on the machine that you need to troubleshoot the hard drive of using the power button and then immediately press the T key. It should boot to a screen with the Firewire symbol showing on the screen. Okay, so once you've got the cable connected, you should see the hard drive of the other Mac appear on the desktop. Uh, it will have the Firewire symbol on there. Alternatively, if you're using Thunderbolt, it'll obviously have the Thunderbolt disk symbol on there. Um, so first of all, to start troubleshooting your hard drive, once it's mounted, if you open Disk Utility, you should then be able to see both hard drives there. The first one will be the hard drive of the machine that you're currently on, and the second, again, with the Firewire symbol, will be the machine in target disk mode. Okay, so what you'll now be able to do is you can select the first aid tab and you can run a verify disk and a repair of the disk. If once you've verified the disk, it shows that the hard disk is actually fine, but you were unable to boot to the operating system on your other Mac, you can actually try and retrieve some data by simply opening the hard drive. It'll show as a normal external hard drive would do and you'll be able to actually see data on there and see if you can actually retrieve anything. To retrieve it, you just literally click and drag it off and onto the hard drive of the Mac that you're using now. Okay, so once you've performed all the checks you need to on your hard drive, and if you've managed to establish that there doesn't appear to be a hardware fault with it, you'll just need to unmount the, the hard drive of the other Mac from this machine. And to do that, you just literally click and drag to the trash can so it ejects it as normal. And once it's done that, you're safe to power the machine off and then remove any cables that connect the two machines together. Next up is target boot mode. Now this is pretty similar to target disk mode. Uh, you start off by connecting the two Macs together. I've used a Firewire cable on this occasion. On the other Mac, you need to turn it on and hold the Alt key uh, which is also known as the option key on startup until you get to the alternative boot options menu. You should see the internal hard drive of this existing Mac that you're currently on and you should also see the hard drive of the other Mac that you've currently targeted into. Um, both Macs are online, hence why each hard drive has a Macintosh HD and a Recovery HD. To boot to it, click on the icon, then just simply click on the arrow and it'll boot into the operating system of the other Mac. Uh, you'll see it boot to the desktop as you would normally expect it to. You'll notice that there are two hard drive icons here. One is the Firewire icon. This is the hard drive of the other machine that we're currently booted from. And the other is the usual hard drive icon, which is the hard drive for the machine we're currently using, but not booted to. Now from here, you can actually open Disk Utility and run the normal uh, Disk Utility checks that you would usually do. And you can also, if you weren't able to boot to the operating system from your other Mac due to a potential issue, you can actually pull off the data from this hard drive onto the current Mac's hard drive simply by accessing it as a normal external hard drive. So because you've been able to boot to the operating system of the other Mac's hard drive, you can pretty much determine that it's not an operating system issue and that it must have been a hardware fault with the other Mac preventing you from booting to the operating system. Okay, so once you've finished using the operating system from the other Mac, if you simply shut the machine down gracefully by clicking the Apple, then shut down. And once that's completely shut down, you should be fine to remove the cables and power off the other machine simply by holding the power button down.
Next up is target display mode. Now to do this you'll need either an iMac 27 inch late 2009 or iMac 27 inch mid 2010 when used with any mini display port enabled Mac or Thunderbolt enabled Mac and mini display port cable or the iMac 27 inch mid 2011 and the 21 and a half inch mid 2011 when used with any Thunderbolt enabled Mac and a Thunderbolt cable. Okay, so firstly, we just need to connect both of the cables with both of the Macs turned on. You can have processing applications running on the iMac while you use it as an extended display for your other Mac device. Now if I'm just open this video up here and set that to play. If I change the iMac to target display mode by pressing the command and the F2 key, which will then allow it to be used as an extended display for my MacBook Pro. And from here, you can move Windows around onto the iMac's display and use it as an extended display as you would do if it was a normal um, display connected to the MacBook Pro. Now if I take the iMac back out of target display, press the command and the F2 key again, you'll see the video has continued to play in the background undisturbed and that also goes for any other applications that you may want running. So you could have videos encoding while you're continuing to work on your other Mac and it won't interrupt them whatsoever. Hopefully that's helped you solve any issues you've had or answered any questions that you may have had. If you did encounter any problems at all or if you have any queries, contact our technical support team. The details are on screen now and they'll be happy to help you in any way they can.